and welcome back to another episode of Over the Glass. I am your host, Jay. I'm <laughs> co-host, Nessa. <laughs> Speaking at us from quarantine. Day I... six? Six. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know how this quarantine thing goes, because Chrissy says after day five, you should be good, and you don't have to isolate no more. But then my doctor was like, if you still test positive after day five, you should stay isolated until day 10. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> since I live in this house with three other people that I don't want to get the infection, I'm like, I'll stay away. So here I am reporting from my room. Do my flag? <laughs> I don't know if I've recorded nice. from in here before. I don't think so. Well, welcome to my room. <laughs> Glad we're through your screen and not not in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so I'm fresh off of going to Silicon Valley Pride and hanging out with the San Jose Sharks crew and folks in the queer hockey space um yeah it was it was a day oh sorry messaging me the whole time and i'm having major fomo (laughs) yeah i got there super early and by super early that means on time (laughs) and there was there was like i want to say it was mostly san jose uh, sharks and like barracuda staff and I was just kind of like on the side being introverted and being like I don't know <laughs> how to engage with people and um, I don't know what his job title is but um, a member from the staff Doug was the first to approach me and introduced himself and gave me one of the one of the shirts uh and then soon after that netta showed up and and then people started to come in a little more as we were um hanging around trying to stay cool um i met with some folks from sj battery pack um carlos i think is the kind of the the ringmaster of it all so shout out to carlos was a nice time talking to you um talked with with some other folks i think they were there with that pack or maybe with teal city crew i'm really bad with names so i if i see you again i will remember your face and i'm sorry if i don't remember your name uh i had to talk a little bit with um with a fan heather got to introduce myself, talk about the podcast, let them know, you know, here, we're here, we're here for queer folks, we're here for folks that want to support us, we're talking about hockey and, and all that stuff, so come check us out. Um, got to meet some folks from the San Francisco Earthquakes, um, shout out to, who was it that just added us? Um <laughs> Joey. Joey is the San Francisco Earthquakes uh, social media guy. So I got to meet him and some other folks on the team. Uh, Finally got to meet Tar in person. So she's delightful. Uh, And then I got to talk with Jonathan Becker, who is super popular. So I kind of had to wait a little bit because I didn't want to insert myself in there. Yeah, and I'm like, I'll wait my turn. Um, Pretty much just, you know, wanted to meet him and and let him know that we appreciate his support. Um, So it was a nice conversation where his his reaction was pretty genuine because he was just like, you know, like, of course we're going to support, you know, um, the queer community. You know, that's what Teal Together is all about. And... Um, you know, then he asked me, like, does it not feel real? And I said, no, it's not that. It's just, you know, I'm speaking on behalf of like both of us, like when 
before we started this podcast, like quote unquote media journey, like we're just fans that are on the outside looking in and you kind of like consume what's given to you. But as queer people, as people of color, you know, there's stuff happening in this world. And we've had experiences where people are nice to our face. And then we find out later that they don't like us, you know, behind our backs. So it's not to say that that is what we were feeling, but you find yourself questioning things sometimes because you need that reassur reassurance that what you're being told and what you're consuming is, is genuine. Um, and, you know, so I just said that getting to meet you and then coming to this event and, you know, we've had like Tara on the pod, we've had Amanda, we've had um, Aaron, folks like from within the organization that we get to kind of have that more personal experience with. It helps to reiterate that what we're feeling is like genuine and so he in response he said oh yeah i can i can see what you're talking about and reiterated like yes you know we're happy to support and and all this stuff so um yeah it was way too hot though but not not like 90 degrees which was nice but i think because the parade didn't really start on time i think we were kind of like one of the last in the parade. So I don't know, we were just out there for a long time <laughs> waiting. But you had fun, it sounds like. Yeah, for the most part, I was kind of done by the time the parade was over. I'm like, I want to go home. It's hot. Um, but yeah, it was nice conversations. Um, so I don't know if this person wants me to talk about this conversation so i'm not gonna put the name but one of one of the things during the parade was that they had a couple of the barracuda players come out and you know every now and then you kind of see some stuff from the players like we're not we're not dumb we know some of them are support some folks that we're not down with it seems, but we don't know. We're like, okay, this is, I can only see so much, but when players come and actually show up to certain things, you're like, okay, you know, like, I guess they're supportive and whatever, but like what I said with my conversation with Jonathan, I kind of still have that like feeling of, but are they just doing it because they're part of the team that they've got to do like this stuff and blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm getting at? And, you know, like a part of me was wondering, like, do they even know what this means to come to this parade or do they just kind of see it as just a task as part of, being part of the organization and kind of just need to like roll, roll with it type of thing. Um, so this person said that, you know, from what they know about the organization, they don't really, if, if they are bringing players out, it's kind of, they, they tell them, you know, we have this thing, we'd like you to come out, but it's up to you type of thing. It's not like they're forced to show up and, you know, play this, play this part. Um, and if you see the, the pictures and the videos and stuff that came out during the parade, you'll see that um, Ethan Cardwell and Brandon Co were in attendance uh, and there's a picture where they're holding like the different flags they're holding up the progressive flag. They're holding up the traditional um, pride flag and they were wearing jerseys that kind of had like colorful 
numbers on the back of them like throughout the parade when they were going around like during the parade and they were handing out like you know pride merch and and engaging with the crowd and everything like that but i had this conversation of going back to some of the stuff that i've seen particularly with co and i said i'm actually really surprised to see co here i don't know anything about cardwell but they said, you know, they went up there and they they talked with them after that picture was taken. And they said, you know, pretty much like, thanks for being here. This is how I identify. And pretty much having this conversation or, you know, letting them know that, you know, this is this is a really important event. And I hope you kind of understand that and and that sort of stuff. And whatever, and they said that the the way that their faces were, I like you could kind of see that they were kind of like, oh, you know, but not. I I, I won't. I don't want to interpret what I didn't see, right? But just from their recollection, like I don't like I don't see it as a bad thing, right? Because I I don't think unless you live in live in our shoes for a day you don't really understand the gravity of it like you see it as oh here's this pride thing and people are having a good time blah 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 like i can get behind that but how how far down can you really are are you really seeing the impact that you're having by showing up by engaging with the community by interacting with with everybody at, at the parade so i guess my takeaway from that is i'm happy that they had that conversation with them however brief and whether or not they really understood what they meant by that i don't know but it it's it's a good it's a good interaction to have. And I don't know, maybe we'll see them again at the parade. Maybe maybe other Barracuda players will show up. I did mention, you know, honestly, I don't I'm not expecting players like this to be like the next Curtis Gabriel, right? But it's already it's nice in itself to see them come out to these events. Um, but like that extra layer would would be really nice yeah, yeah it would be <clears throat> so like from what you're saying it sounds like they <laughs> they were going to have a great time because it's a parade and they're young and they're like oh yeah pride sure it's it's a small party here in you know it's silicon valley is it's a very small pride event like maybe like i don't i don't really i don't want to kind of put any assumptions obviously i didn't have this interaction with them and it doesn't and it doesn't sound like there was much of a conversation happening but i'm just saying in general i feel like people who aren't part of the queer community and maybe don't in like i have obviously we we have like straight friends right like i they can like support us and they can educate themselves and stuff like that but i think the average hockey dude who maybe doesn't have someone in their family who's part of the queer community like that that's kind of where i feel like the expression that uh, this person described is probably where they were at where they understand that Pride is this thing because like there's this queer community and like they know this the surface level of it. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering if they really understand like the struggles and what pride is about and just like the more the deeper side of it. And I think that that interaction that they had with this person I think that perhaps that was like, oh, like maybe we really don't know what this means. It's not just a parade. There's so much more behind it. 
is kind of what I took from that. Like, I don't think they're just oblivious. I just think that they just have a general understanding of it. Right. What I was going to say was like, I feel like there's an opportunity here for someone from the Sharks organization to kind of use these events to, to kind of educate these players, right? Uh, you know, they, they have the opportunity to be able to talk to people of a queer community at this event learn a little bit from from us and be like spread a little love <laughs> and some knowledge you know like we're just, this is the reason why we celebrate pride it's not because we feel special it's because it's this is where like we came from protesting and fighting for our rights i mean it's always good to to do more um we don't really know what goes on like in as far as the organization and you know, just like the day-to-day -day stuff that maybe they they kind of have available for the players, but maybe they were maybe they were also like like I don't know like just because you're a player in the league doesn't mean you have like the best social skills, right? Like I I don't think I would if I was somehow like a professional athlete. I I think I would kind of get into a rhythm of like how to talk to certain people, especially if you're talking with the media or maybe you talk with like, like kids are probably the easiest, <laughs> but when you actually have like adults who want to have like these, these engaging conversations, maybe they were also kind of like deer in headlights with like, I don't know how to respond to that, but you know, but I think in general, like my takeaway from it is like, at least they were there, at least this interaction happened and maybe they go home and if they didn't already know that stuff, maybe it kind of plants that seed, you know, kind of like what you're talking about, like, you know, having an opportunity. Cause I think that's kind of like where this stuff sort of starts, especially if you're, you yourself are not part of the community and you don't have anyone in your immediate circle it's kind of, it's easier to not be engaged in it because it doesn't affect you on really any level. So, but I think in general, it was, it was a pretty good uh, experience. I, I don't know if the crowd was bigger previously and maybe because we were one of the last to go in the parade like people just started dispersing but um probably not. Really seemed like a whole lot of people were no when okay. i went last year it was it was very like the crowd was what's the word sparse <laughs> it's just very yeah. small yeah because yeah. they gave us some stuff to hand out and i was towards the back and everybody that was like ahead of me was already going and giving out stuff to everybody. And I'm like, uh, I have all this stuff. And I was trying to see if anybody wanted it. And, you know, of course they, like, they already got some from, from everyone else. I was on the side where the two Barracuda players were, were handing out stuff. So it was really nice to see them like engaging with the crowd and handing out stuff and everything. So, Good job, Co and Cardwell. <laughs> yeah, they didn't have any players last year, so it's it's nice to see that some somebody decided to go mm -hmm. this time. Uh, speaking of uh, Cardwell, isn't he the the prospect that he has his own podcast? Yeah, you should have given him a flyer. Maybe maybe we should invite him on and then ask him about his experience at Pride. Yeah, maybe we know a way to get mm. in contact with him, right? Hmm. You should have gave him a flyer. I ideas are maybe I like to be honest. I I'm like I don't know what I want to. I kept I thinking know. maybe I'll go over, but then I'm like I don't know what I'm gonna say to them outside of like, hey, it's cool that you're here. Like I went towards people where I'm like I could have a good conversation with this this queer person or. Let me go talk to, yeah, whoever. Like, I was having more fun doing that than trying to figure out what am I going to say to the non-gays? <laughs> <laughs> to the obviously not gay people at this event. <laughs> uh, 
I don't know, man. Just from the me- the messages you were sending me, it sounded like it was pretty cool, pretty chill. Like I said, I was really looking forward to going. I was so sad when I got my positive test. <laughs> well, you were missed. People uh, were sad that you could not attend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, like, did people know I was supposed to go, or they just saw you and was like, "Oh, where's Nessa?" Well, Tara was about to ask about you, and but I was pretty much telling folks that knew you were part of the podcast that you you couldn't make it. So, so then they were bummed to not have you in attendance. So. Yeah, Tara's sweet. I wish, I don't know what I was going to say, but like, spend a day with her seems like it'd be fun. She seems like such a fun person. <laughs> um, I was asking her, like, do you, do you know what's happening with, like, NBC with, like, Curtis Brown is off doing other things? I can't remember what he what he went off to do. Like, I think he's part of some Coach hockey something. organization. Yeah, some coaching thing that he, he took on. So who knows what, like, Brody's schedule is because he's always doing, like, the A stuff and whatever. So <laughs> she says she doesn't – so she says she doesn't know yet. She's still waiting. And because I said, oh, I saw that, like, Shang had Jason Demers on. And I didn't – I didn't – listen to the podcast but like the clip that uh i saw on twitter he was talking about how like whether he is looking to work for like the nhl on nbc or like the shark side of it or whatever so i just asked like do you know anything about that or are they just kind of talking hypotheticals and she said i don't i don't think anything's happening like as of now on that so um yeah so nothing really on that front yet (laughs) we'll see what happens Mm -hmm. i would love for her to be thrown in there but but that means she wouldn't be hanging around the arena for her her stuff probably well Well, no she's she did a little bit of both last season and she said that she kind of likes that like it it's she gets a little bit of a different experience with both of them so i don't know i think it would be nice if she's on the broadcast and then she's in in the like the in arena part of it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, no, I mean, it was nice to, to get to meet some folks, especially um, when I introduced myself and was starting my little spiel about the podcast and folks were, um, a couple of folks were familiar with us, so that was nice to hear. Um, and then just generally, like, once I started telling them about it, like, they, they were really interested and and things like that. So um, I didn't get to hand out as many flyers as I wanted to. And that's kind of because of like the crowd really, like like you said, it was very spread out and whatever. And then there were also like a lot of like kids. And I was like, I don't know if I want to give, like, that'd be <laughs> weird. Like if you're like an eight year old listening to podcasts, like that, I don't, I don't think that that's what eight-year-olds are doing. So it, I don't know. I handed out a couple of them, but not really like what I was kind of like hoping. I was thinking of like maybe I would find somewhere like in in like the what is it the festival grounds or whatever the where the all the events were happening. Maybe I'd find a spot there, but like it was. Like, we were just out in the sun, like, way too long. Yeah. I'm like, no, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. Like, uh, why do they do it at the end of August? It's, like, the hottest days of summer. Did you see that the Florida Panthers had this um, Latin America Cup? What? No. What? Yeah. 
Yeah, today's the last day. They had a, well, it started on the 23rd, and it's the fifth annual tournament um, called the Marigold Latin Cup. And it's featuring hockey teams from Latin America, the Caribbean, and around the world. <laughs> around the world, like, <laughs> what countries are those? <laughs> Please tell me more. I didn't hear about this. Wait. Uh, apparently, there's teams from Armenia and Greece, and then there were 33 teams from 21 countries and territories, including Argentina, Brazil, the Caribbean, Central America, Chile, Colombia, Egypt, Israel, Lebanon, Mexico, and Venezuela. That's wild. That's so cool. All these countries have hockey teams. Single day tickets are five dollars, while a full tournament pass is twenty. Like, that's what if you... I was in Florida, if they if Florida didn't hate us, yeah, I'm down. That's that's a pretty sweet deal for the tournament pass. You get to see all yeah. these like like the players are. Uh, 750 players across six divisions, including men's division, um, women's, youth under 12, under 14, like basically everybody. You could go and watch all these games from teams that have come from literally all across the globe. But, but Jay, I thought there was no market for hockey. I, there, apparently there's not, like Hockey that's cool i like it. that um it's supported by the florida panthers the nhl and the nhl pa that's cool i wish they would have announced that on a bigger scale or something i wish they would do that think... with other teams too fans could get into it and support this this new uh tournament you can write them and let them know. <laughs> sure. I, strongly I, have a worded I have a suggestion. <laughs> strongly worded opinion. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that happened. So that's pretty neat. Um, too bad it was in Florida. I know. This, uh... for, for several reasons, too bad. <laughs> yes. Um, but... Okay, so the only news that I've semi kept up with this week is the craziness going on with the women's national team from Spain. What happened at the World Cup that you you <laughs> broke that news to me last week? I was stunned because I hadn't seen it, and then everything that followed with you know the what is what is his title president. Like he threw a the, yeah the president of the football association of Spain. Like he threw a tantrum because he got called out. And he's like, "I'm not resigning," and then the coach, the head coach, also is supporting this guy. Which there was drama about the the team actually not coming out to play for the World Cup because they didn't want to be coached by this guy. I don't know what happened and why they ended up coming out and playing anyways, but you know, they won and now all this mess is happening and this coach is digging a deeper hole for himself. Like he was under investigation for some sexual assault or something. And then the, the women's team decided to protest and they, they weren't going to come out for the world cup to play under him. Um, but then they did, they won. And then now this mess is happening. So these the, these poor women are I they just they can't even when they win they can't win. Yeah, pretty much like they should be celebrating, and instead they have to deal with all this BS because this guy is trying to say like, based like I don't I don't want to quote anything because I don't have it in front of me, but pretty much denying that any of this should be happening because he feels like it was consensual while um, Jenny um, Hermoso said no. And she, and it's not like she waited a couple of days to say no. It was literally in 
the locker rooms while they were celebrating and they were talking about it and she said no i did not enjoy that yeah and even then it's just they they're putting words in her mouth they're saying it was her fault it's just it's ridiculous but it's been nice to see that the soccer world you know taking her side in, in solidarity showing their support uh i saw i think it was the announcer from barcelona um, condemned it and he's like i'm behind her it's disgusting what he did uh, i fully support what she's do like what she's doing and like all that and then um uh, was it like this past friday i think the Orlando Pride and the San Diego Wave, I think, were playing each other. And they were wearing, like, tape around their wrist that said... Um, there were a lot of teams that were doing that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which is... It's nice to see, you know? Like, they're all... They're all stepping up and being like, we're all behind you. But uh, the whole situation sucks. Yeah, the... Um, Sevilla team? I don't know where they play but they were also showing support for her um so it's nice to see you know this men's team doing that um apparently the the spain football federation is threatening to 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 sue the protesting women who who were on the team and are now saying that they will not play again until this guy resigns so now instead of them helping them out, they're like, well, then we'll just sue you. Like, this this team literally just won a freaking cup for the entire country. And you're just showing your entire ass. I'm just, I, Wow. It's so ridiculous because you can you can feel how outnumbered they are, and they just keep throwing this BS out there, and it's like just give up. Like you're 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 fighting a losing fight. <laughs> you're gonna lose. You're outnumbered. Well, I wish them luck because I I almost kind of wish Elena was available to come on. The spot I know I'd this like weekend to, to be like. It explained to us what's going on in Spain today in this whole week. Like, I just, I just, yeah, I just feel like some of that context might be missing in terms of being able to really understand more about, hopefully, to feel one way or another with, with how this might go. Because right now it just seems very chaotic and I feel really bad for these women who should be celebrating. Uh, I, I saw, I don't remember who, but obviously one of the board members for, for Bay FC, um, I believe she has said, or I might have seen it from another person, basically how this, this win has been taken by a man. Like this entire awesome group of women who won the cup. Now the glory of it is being stolen away by this dude who feels so entitled and somehow thought this was consensual, which obviously I'm really not believing him at all because everyone saw it. Well, he was kissing all of them on the cheek, and it was it was weird because he was being very like forceful about it. But then I don't know why with her he decided to kiss her on the mouth. She was just <laughs> like, "How are you supposed to react like that in that moment with all those cameras on you?" Yeah, I would just want to get out of there like ASAP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really crappy. <laughs> So, I don't know. I guess we'll see what comes from that. Um, hopefully, they they can 
find some way to still celebrate their their win. I hope so. They deserve it. Even though I wasn't rooting for them. <laughs> I am now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now we're rooting for them for, for other reasons. That's it. That's all I have. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I guess we should sign off by by mentioning that. I hope I say her name correctly. Um, Rhea Stewart was the first woman um, to try out for the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. She got to start in a game this past week, and she, I think, off the top of my head, she had stopped twenty four shots. And no goals allowed, so she got a shutout. So good for her. Woo! Very nice. Awesome. <laughs> oh, woo! I can't, I can't match your enthusiasm right now. <laughs> okay. I think that's just about all we've got for this week. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm starting to feel tired. <laughs> this took a lot today. All right. Well, everyone send their best wishes to to Nessa to get over COVID fog. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty foggy over here. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us this week. As always, I'm your host, Jay. I'm co-host Nessa. Thanks for joining. Bye. Bye.